in this video we're going to focus on the chart area border plugin in chart.js and this is a very interesting topic as well you might say well this is not that expensive over interesting well don't get me wrong we're going to look at something that's really really exciting because it's like a specific hidden gem in the chart.js documentation so to do this i want you to go here in chart.js and then just click here on the samples and once we are in the samples and when you scroll down here we're going to get the following here it's plugins and in the plugins we're going to click on here the chart area border all right so we have here this nice chart area border and this here shows a sample plugin if you see my other plugin where i was dis dissecting the plugin of the colors about the canvas background color this one is a continuation of it basically going deeper on it so what are we going to do here well first of all i want to copy all of this i want to create everything here from this example so let's copy this and put it all in here so first of all just click here a script there we are some javascript here paste this code in there i'm just going to grab everything immediately then after i'm going to reorganize everything to my preference i'm going to put this one here up right now because i do see that the plugin must be above the config all right and then next we have here the data and the data here this is the most confusing one and I, that's why i'm telling you do not look too much at all of this stuff here i will explain what it is but it is the least important thing to know honestly all right so we have this here the next thing what i want to do is i want to get the chart as uh, javascript uh, link that's the one the chart .js library sorry this this one here i'm going and getting started grab this here put it in here next i'm going to grab this one here i just copy that one that's fine put it in here say the following i'm going to offer indentate for given indentation and then finally what we're going to do here we're going to give here a chart class or a class sorry chart box to make sure that this will not be too big or jump uh, or expand into infinity so we say here this is the class chart box and we say in this chart box we're going to give it a style and this style will say with 700 pixels this is to avoid the chart and the canvas id to scale into infinity all right so we say here chart box oh sorry with 700 pixels I and mean, if i'm not mistaken this is just a basic line chart or a bar chart so let's save this we don't even know what it is exactly refresh you give you probably all errors that's correct all right so the reason why it gets all errors first of all they have a lot of these items here and i personally do not like them i understand it's quite smart design for the charges documentation because the people who use this at least the, the the contributors they use this to speed up their chart design however for you if you're a beginner and if, if i would be the beginner as i know for myself i would probably copy the text and try to study it then i cannot figure out what the heck these are are they have no meaning to me and they have also no meaning in learning because let me show you what they really are so if you go here in the samples we see the utils and it says the following a disclaimer the utils file contains multiple helper functions that the chart as sample pages pages used to generate charts these fun these functions are subject to change including but not limited to breaking change without prior notice because of this please don't rely on this file in production environments meaning this can change consistently so and it's only designed for the samples for for the documentation do not use this just don't use it don't waste your time on it even don't waste your time on understanding this you can understand them there's a lot of codes here basically it's just it's straightforward it's just this so it has your data count we just loop this through seven times here the data etc etc same here you'll get the seven months etc etc so i'm going to remove this i just want to make my own version but what i want to do first is i want to make sure we have this so we have the blocks we have the setup block because that's always the structure i like to work with and this is an easy way for anyone who views this who's quite new to understand what we're doing setup block we have the configuration block and this is also according to the chart.js documentation right now they're using this consistently we have here also the render and init or init block basically and finally we have a plugin block the plugin block can be somewhere here and most likely will be here above or just between 
uh, setup and config because the config will usually depend on the plugin block as well. Plugin block. So we have this now. So let's start and work and fix everything what we have here and remove all of these unnecessary codes that just keeps it making it complicated for you as a uh, person who wants to study charge All right. So this is our data. So all of the data in here. We yeah. have all right. So we can say here const data equals and then here we have parentheses and put in here. Going to grab this all. We're going to put this all in here and then afterwards proper indentations. Next here semicolon. Make sure you have a semicolon here and delete all of this. So we have your data count is seven. All right. So basically what it does is it understands there are seven data points here and it will loop through them. So I'm going to just check here that we have data. So, okay, numbers. You can see here this is a random number here we have this as well so this is the month so first of all let's say here we have basically this Jan Feb oh that's fabulous for fat instead of Feb then March and then we have April and then we have May comma uh, we have here June comma July all right so we have all of these here which are seven data points here so that's number one so we have this and we have here the data and then I guess we can just do random data because basically here it just is a formula looping through it which is okay it's quite nice to have but for now I don't want to have, have any of this because I don't want to confuse you with all of these complicated matters so we say here simple data so I say 10 comma 20 comma 40 comma 33 comma 25 comma um, 15 comma 10 all right so we have one data set here here we have the util chart colors Let's make it red all right but make sure that this is a string and finally we have the background color i'm going to make this well what it did here it says 0 0.5 for transparency in my case i think that's fine we can use that as well we can use here the rgb rgba oh, rgba Yes, we just do almost similar. And then, oh, uh, let's see. Sorry, no, that's not necessary. Yes, RGBA, but this is a string. Remember. Let me say here, two five five comma zero because the first one is red. Then we have green zero comma zero point five for transparency or alpha value of five or fifty percent. All right. So we've got this. Then we have you almost similar. So I'm going to grab here this data set here. I'm just going to paste this in here, and we make this blue. And then we say here, blue is RGB, the B is for blue, so we say 255, 0. All right, I will give this some different data points 3, 5, or 13, 15, and then it's 25 and 13. All right, so we have this here, so we have everything done here. All of this can be removed. What they did really is a random value here, so but it's okay, no, no needed for us. All right, so the next thing is we're going to look at, well, plugin block, I will just check here, or I'll just cut this out for now and put it in here. Because the plugin block here, in this case, has a specific name, which is called this, so I say plugin there. All right, so very simple. I will not touch this yet. I will have to double check later on if there would be any conflict. All right, next we have the configuration block. And the configuration block consists of a few items here, which is the plugins. All right, so you should know how we already did this. If you didn't do it, please check my other video. And then you also understand this structure here. Cut this out. And the video I'm referring to is the background color or the canvas background color plugin. Please watch that video. There's three videos in there that goes deep in plugin understanding as well. That's even a continuation of this one. Or basically, this is the continuation of those videos. Next, so we have this here now. We have all of this. What's happening or what's missing here is the render and initialization block. So what we're going to do now is basically do this here and start solving this one. How do we do this? Well, let me do the action exercise for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a few minutes or basically I will just give it five seconds, just pause the video, work on this, See if you can figure out how to render and in, or how to initialize and render the chart itself. Because if we save this right now, it won't work because we're missing the crucial part here. So try to figure that one out.
All right, so now I've given you a few seconds. I hope you pause it before that. I'm going to show you exactly how I would do it and how you should do it. Here, first of all, we're going to render this with the initialization block. What we're going to do is we're going to say here, what's the ID name of a chart? In this case, or the canvas ID equals my chart. So we say here, constant my chart equal, and then we're going to put in here the following. We say new because we're going to create a constructor, new chart. Here, parentheses. All right, so between here, we're going to work, I'm going to put in here. So what are we going to put in here? Well, the first thing we need to do is assign the ID of the canvas. So we say your document dot get element by ID. And oh, make sure that the, these letters are capitalized and watch out what I was almost mistyping it. And then say here, my chart comma then the next one is we're going to render what are we going to render are we going to render the convict or are we going to render the, the this part or this one well if you understand the structure and how it's so far been built up this is everything consistently built up on this convict is dependent on this here and this and also the convict is also dependent on the data and the data is stored in here all right so basically we say here only config and we're done. If we save this, we should see something here. All right, we don't see it. So let's try to understand what's going on. All right, we have an unexpected identifier in 24. All right, so I was not expecting this. I thought this was already done. So line 24, what's going on? Uh, all right, this makes sense. Of course, we're not allowed to do this one here. I'm just going to cut this out. Sorry, this I should see in this one, but maybe you figured that one out yourself. You did figure it out well. Congrats for you. Very well done. Very well done. Then we have here the const. This is as well forbidden. This is a double const. So we're going to fine tune this. And we're going to put it all into order. And you can see here we have one parentheses too much. Refresh. There we are. So now we have this here. Beautifully. So let's look here what's going on here. We have this, we have all of these. We have the line dash, etc. etc. And then we have here the dash color. Everything is set up here already nicely. And this is really, really good. So you can see here now what I want to do. Well, what can we still do more here basically? Because based on this here, we already have everything what I would expect. So in this case, I guess that was the only exercise for now. Can we do something else more? Uh, we could add up other items, but in this case, I would say there's no real need or else we want to dive in into the canvas. And probably there will be a very nice series very soon to explore where we're exploring all the different items of the canvas tag. However, if you're able to do this one, great job. And if you didn't do it, please check and understand how to do it and how to analyze also, including with the console log. This is really useful. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.